worst snow is coming. I just don't like that idea, but they say in Minnesota, you got to get used to that. But we appreciate you coming out tonight for the concert. We're excited about John Tibbs and Derek Johnson and their ministry. Uh, before we pray, I'm just going to invite Nikki, the station manager from Katie, Nikki, to come up and say hi and tell you what she's got in that going down there. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Good. Yeah, all right. Well, we're so excited to be here. Um, thank you so much for being a part of this evening. And I also wanted to just take a quick second and say thank you if you were able to get involved in our last week's uh, pledge drive. It, it, you just blow me away each and every time. I'm so thankful that um, we have your support of the Ministry of Life 973. So thank you, thank you so much. And hey, if you want to go back and say hi at any point um, before or after the concert or if you have to get up, we would love that. I have a couple of really great ladies with some goodies on the table, even a giveaway. So we'd love to say hi. All right, would you all stand with me and let's pray. Right. If you haven't said hi to the people by you, can you just do that right now? Say hello to some of the people that are standing right by you. In case you don't know who they are, say hello. Welcome them. Tell them it's nice to have them here. Introduce yourself. Be friendly, a little bit friendly. Lord, just that everything that is said, everything that is sung, those notes that are played, Lord, that truly would just be anointed of you and minister to us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let's welcome Derek Johnson. How you guys doing? All right. Well, um, my name is Derek, and uh, I am a... Born and raised Duluthian, um, so whenever you, whenever you hear John later tonight talk about being from a southern state, just give him a lot of grace because uh, he's not used to some of this cold and, and stuff. And I'm honestly not super used to it anymore either. Uh, I think living in Tennessee over the last couple of years has kind of caused my uh, veins to, I don't know, constrict or something. So when I come up here, it's, it's cold again, but I'm, I'm reminded that uh, that's not a bad thing. We, we know it keeps the riffraff out and stuff like that. So it is always awesome to be back in Minnesota and especially in Duluth. The song is called God of All. God of all sorrow, God of all joy. God in the core. Yeah. 
get to Thee. How great the heart, how great the heart that sings my soul, my Savior, get to how great Thou art, how great Thou art. And when I think that God is so not sparing, sent Him to die, I scarce can make Some new music that uh, is in the pipeline. Um, this kind of, I'm going to kind of be weaving in and out a little bit here of just uh, context of, of just where life is kind of led and, and um, to, to get everybody up to speed real quick in case you're just like, who is this guy and why, why is he here tonight? And, um, uh, born and raised in Duluth, um, went to Proctor High School. Um, won't say when I graduate because I don't want you guys to know <laughs> just how old I am, but you can probably tell. Um, uh, and uh, went straight out of high school um, to Fargo, North Dakota, and uh, went to NDSU out there. It was a great experience for me. Um, it was a little scary, but it was something God needed to push me to do and to leave home. Uh, went through their program out there for pharmacy and uh, met my wife out there and and uh, ended up finishing pharmacy school, getting married, um, moving away to even further to uh, um, Virginia and Norfolk area uh, with the Navy. Um, was a pharmacist in the Navy for a few years and then got out of that and moved back to Fargo and thought, man, we're going to move back to Fargo and, and, and settle down and have our house and the, the two and a half kids and all that and everything will be great, right? Or maybe it's two kids and a dog. I don't know. But uh, I can tell you right now it's four kids, so it's, it's a little bit more than that. But um, uh, we, just during that time, this kind of that transition back to North Dakota, I just felt God stirring and um, just putting on my heart uh, a desire to just go back into ministry and uh, um, just kind of pray through that. And that led me to, to going back to Bible school and, and being a worship pastor. 
and uh, for about seven years uh, was in a town in South Dakota called Aberdeen and uh, led worship there. Some South Dakotans in here? All right. Um, so, um, yeah, so that just, you know, it was an awesome time. It was a, definitely a time for me to, to just kind of um, press into the Lord and figure out what his, his plans were for, for our lives. But um, during that time, I um, went back uh, and, and recorded an album. And uh, it's been five years ago now that that album came out, but it's called Carry On. And a lot of those uh, songs from that time and the lyrics I had written were just out of that season of um, really leaving kind of one life that I thought I was, um, well, that, that God was taking me out of and, and going into another. But in, in just kind of the way my mind was working is, as God put on my heart a call for ministry, I thought, well, one day I'll just be not doing pharmacy and I'll be in this other profession. And it's just been a journey of kind of balancing both. And um, even right now where I, where I live, I'm, I'm still in pharmacy, but I'm doing music and um, seeing his hand in, in both areas. So, um, but the songs uh, that I wrote for that album, I want to play a couple for you. This first one's called Prodigal. And it's just about uh, the, really the father's heart for, um, for all of us, because I believe at one point in time we all were prodigals, we all were sinners and apart from him, but he pursued us. And uh, that passage where uh, in Luke 15 talks about the prodigal son, talks about uh, also a couple other instances where Jesus is talking about searching for a lost coin, the, the shepherd going after the lost sheep. And then finally, the last son, and you just see the father's heart for these these things that he will go to just the extreme lengths to to bring back and find those who are lost. So. Take a look at this heart of mine. That's the empty longing you will find. Soul that's lost. Left your presence, I ran away. Chased after what I thought would stay. Not moving over the hills. Now I'm so far from home. Worn out and all alone. But when I turn.
Well, uh, just mentioned some new music. There's uh, kind of a cool story that just kind of came about uh, here in the past couple of months with um, a guy I've been working with. Uh, living in a town called Spring Hill, Tennessee. It's about 45 minutes or so south of Nashville. And a uh, producer guy that I'm working with um, was contacted by uh, an author who has a book coming out. It's actually next month that the, the book's going to release. Um, it's called The Jesus Dare. Uh, pretty bold title. And uh, it's by a guy named Jay Payleitner. And um, he writes a lot of stuff that's kind of husband, wife, marriage type stuff and raising your kids and things like that. And um, with this book, he um, just kind of had a vision for um, really just for people that maybe are, are skeptical or just hesitant to maybe take that step and cross that line over uh, to following Jesus to, to just say, take, take the dare. Um, you know, here's the evidence. Here's, here's what we know. Here's what the Bible says. Um, a lot of that material where it's just saying what, what holds you back from really, from really believing. And so along with the book, he wanted a, a song that would kind of dovetail with that message. And uh, so we got together and, and wrote something that, that uh, we think uh, represents the book well. I wish I had copies of the book with me. Um, I probably will. I'm not going to promise, but I hope I will when I come back um, this summer. And, uh, but if you look it up, The Jesus Dare, this song is also called The Jesus Dare, Dare to Believe. And um, really, you know, books, when, when I was growing up, kind of my generation, uh, things like More Than a Carpenter, or Evidence That Demands a Verdict, things like that that really just made you think about the gospel. And uh, a book like More Than a Carpenter by Josh McDowell, um, one thing that really just always stuck out to me about that book is his laying out just, you know, the disciples of Jesus and how Basically, all of them, we know the end of their lives was, was martyrdom, that they believed so strongly in the gospel that they were willing to die for it. We know a couple that, um, that didn't, um, but we know pretty much by church history that, that they all uh, went to that length. And for me, it's like if they were that close to Jesus and they saw something that was that real, um, that, that speaks volumes to me as well to, to say, you know, what am I doing? What, what, what's my problem? So, um, so this song I've only played it a couple times. And uh, um, so you guys are kind of my guinea pigs, if you don't mind. But um, as uh, we get towards the end of this, this month of April, the song should be releasing. And uh, if you're on Facebook or Instagram, look me up and uh, we'll, we'll have it out there. So... Like you and 
meant to be Would you dare to believe? Would you dare to believe? Take the Jesus dare, it changes everything It changes everything Every fear, every doubt, every pain Jesus changes everything What if He is who He says He is Who He says He is What if He is who He says He is What if it's all true To see those mountains move If you only knew You could be made new Free like you were meant to be Would you dare to believe? Would you dare to believe? Take the Jesus dare It changes everything he changes everything Amen, thank you guys Well, um, thank you so much for coming out tonight um, I just wanted to, to thank Pastor Rolf and uh, folks of Duluth Gospel Tabernacle for hosting us and um, Life 97.3 and just many people in this, this community who, who support things like this. It's really, um, really blesses us to come in and be able to do this. And uh, to, to just give a couple of shout outs, Jonathan, who's running our sound tonight, just thank you so much for being here. Um, my sister Shelly, who has been kind of boots on the ground in Duluth and Cloquet and just canvassing the area, she's been a huge support and blessing to me. Um, but yeah, just thank you guys so much. It's really cool to, to hang out with you guys for a few few minutes and play some songs and you will be blessed by John uh, believe me it's, you, you're in for a treat um, this last song is we're approaching Easter in a couple of weeks um, I love songs that are just kind of speak of that transformation of like this is who I was and this is who I am now in Christ and um, just just leading people to the cross just leading people and, and putting the gospel in front of them and saying you know this is what it's all about um, I write a, a weekly blog, and uh, as we're leading up to Easter, the, the one that I was impressed to write this week is just to say, you know, basically the, the tomb is empty, and uh, we have to do something with, with that. We have to respond somehow. Even, even no response at all is, is a response, but uh, the world looks in and especially looks at the church and at Christians during this time of year and, and just ponders, like, what is this all about? So. Um, we have the opportunity just through our lives, just one life at a time, just to infect and, and influence this world for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is called My Hope is in the Cross. Yeah. 
God's wrath was placed, was placed upon you. My afflictions, He surely somebody introduce yourself some of you are just looking at me say hi to somebody by you welcome them after you welcome somebody say great to have you here you may be seated some of you are just looking at me you may be seated so it's great for us tonight to have two recording artists from Nashville Tennessee and so uh, Derek Charles Johnson was wonderful. There's CDs available out there. Also t-shirts, other things you can buy. Uh, John Tibbs, the same thing. So welcome. Great to have you here. Thanks for coming to Duluth. Let's welcome him to Duluth, Minnesota. Well, thank you all so much. It's so good to be with you. You can have a seat. You got to pace yourselves with these things. So my guitar is adjusting to the 30 degree weather here in Minnesota. So give me, give me grace for just a second. Well, it's been wonderful to be with, you, um, be in this town all day. Um, so happy to be here. Song won't let me go. 
concerts every you know from uh, January to January and um, found out that I had to have this back surgery um, it was our only option and um, basically had to cancel a bunch of dates which I haven't done I've been touring full-time since 2013 I've done about you know, you know um, probably if you add it all up uh, over over uh, 800 concerts and um, and I haven't had to cancel a single one. And so all of a sudden I had to cancel 10. And uh, I was so disappointed and devastated. But uh, time came where I was good to go and get back out there. And uh, so uh, the doctor told me the night before I took off, he said, John, ease back into it. Take it easy. And I said, oh, yes, sir. And, uh, and so I did that by hopping on a tour bus. And uh, I played a show last Friday in South Bend, Indiana. And then on Saturday in North Mankato and then St. Cloud on Sunday and then flew home Monday to Nashville and then back up to Minneapolis where I got a car and drove six hours to Burlington, Iowa and then Des Moines and then St. Paul and then uh, a town that's a 
town that I can never pronounce right because it's, uh, can you help me out, Eric? What, what was the town name? Cloquet. I've been saying that incorrectly all week and people have been correcting me, so I wasn't even going to try tonight. And then last night we were up in Ger, Ger, Ann Rapids and then tonight we're here in Duluth, so I am easing back into it. <laughs> But uh, man, so happy uh, to kind of be back up and at it, and that you all are here this evening. I'm so appreciative of it. So thank you. This is a song called Abraham. He's the broken rock in the dry desert, burning springs or cascades. Six years old, uh, I started having this awful uh, stutter, just like that. <laughs> and you know, as a tour all over, you know, it certainly turned to an issue. But it is a struggle I have. Uh, but I think if all of us are honest tonight, we all have our own issues. We all have our own situations. And you know, I don't necessarily understand how certain things happen to certain people. But I do know that God is in everything. In our darkest hour, he is our hope and he is our peace. There's a scripture in 2 Corinthians. Uh, it says that in our darkest hour, his power is perfect. And that's something I hold tightly on to. And, man, I'm just here to encourage you all tonight. There's a lot of different people here out of different homes and different situations. And like I said, we all have our own struggles. And um, I'm just here to encourage you in those things uh, that, you know, sometimes it's okay to not be okay. Uh, because we have access uh, to Jesus, uh, who's perfect all the time. And, uh, man, there's such a powerful and healing thing that can happen when you and I, we open our hearts and our hands to him, and uh, we 
and just say, God, I don't know how I ended up in this situation. I don't know why this is happening. I'm hurt. I'm angry. Uh, I'm sad. And, uh, but I give it to you. And, man, in that, I believe God can teach us a little bit better who he is. I have, I have found out so much about his goodness and about his consistency in those struggles that I have. And so uh, I'm just here to encourage you all tonight in those things. And uh, this is a song I sang uh, church earlier today, uh, but I'm going to sing it over to you tonight, and, and I pray it gives you a peace. It's called Shepherd. <laughs> You made me here, dying out of me. You have covered me, now I will not fear. And I will live by these waters. You delivered me, I will not fear. Oh.
Kentucky boy, and sing a song kind of has a lot of Kentucky influence. I'll say that. So I will sail into the sea to places I don't know, and you with your.
That's, well, thank you. You know, instantly the ego just right out to here, right? Thank you, sir. Uh, had him in this song, and he goes, no. I was like, well, had him in this one, and he goes, no, it's not that one either. At this point, I'm like, I've only got two good songs, so I'm not sure what we're talking about here. And he goes, you know, it's that one. Well, I won't back down. And I said, yes, sir, that is it. <laughs> just so everyone knows, that's not mine. <laughs> this is a song called Hope. Hope is found on the cross. Hope is found on the street. Hope is found in the alone and the fatherless. Trying to get back on his feet. Hope is found in the runaway. And hope is found in the church. And hope is found in the alone and the fatherless. Just trying to make it work. We're all trying to make it work. Because we have a reason to live. We have a promise of home. Because you carried our cross and you stood in our place. We have a reason to hope. Take me back to where I've been. No, I've seen the way you Since we're going on year number eight, 
And um, Emily's amazing. Yeah, thanks. I'll clap for that too. Uh, Emily is amazing. Uh, she is a kindergarten teacher and um, she's a home. And so as a guy that's touring all the time, Emily's a home, uh, there's, uh, uh, there aren't a ton of evenings where it's just us. And man, um, if I'm ever able to encourage anyone, to have an impact on anyone, to point people to Jesus, it takes two of us. And, uh, and so uh, this is a song actually composed on an airplane headed up to Minnesota back in uh, 2016. Uh, it was uh, December, and I had a concert up there, and then I was done. And after that, I had some extended time at home together, and I was really excited about it. And so I composed this tune um, in honor of Emily, and I didn't ever think it would ever, you know, end up on an album or anything like that, but it did. And, and um and so I get the uh, uh, I get the opportunity to sing it every evening as a chance to kind of anchor us uh, as a couple. And so, uh, just a little bit of context about the song. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm a Kentucky boy, so Kentucky basketball is like everything. And um, it was a Hoosier. And if you know anything about college basketball, you know Indiana and Kentucky don't quite see eye to eye. And uh, I went to college in Indiana, Anderson University, and um, I stepped on to campus that very first day, and I saw her, and I was like, who is this girl? And then I was like, who's that guy she's with? <laughs> and, some time, uh, and some time had to go by, and the guy disappeared, and it was just her, and I took her out on a date, and we just had an awesome time. And, uh, but I picked up early on throughout our date that uh, it's kind of like her ancestors came over in the 1800s, and hiked on out to Anderson, Indiana, and just sat down. They've been there ever since. So all her aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents, they're all there. And they're awesome people. Um, but, you know, that day ended, and I went home that night thinking, it's going to be hard trying to kiss a Hoosier fan. And, <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, you know, I got the courage to ask him back out to the second day. And um, early on, I was like, Emily, we need to talk. Uh, if this is going to work out, you, 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 you're going to need a cheer on Kentucky basketball. Can you do that? And she said, sure. And uh, it's been great ever since. So. <laughs> Found this love, but we won't end. Cause 
So I'm going to do a song. Um, see, I got back in the studio and uh, put this you know, song out. It's out on iTunes and YouTube and Spotify, and it'll be on our upcoming album. But uh, it is the only song tonight that I personally didn't er, er, uh, er, write. And um, so it's going to be the best song you guys are going to hear tonight. And, uh, uh, truly, um, uh, this is a powerful Powerful song. Um, um, I heard this at home at this event when some guys were kind of throwing out songs that hadn't never been, you know, put out on an album. And I heard it, and it stopped me dead. And I was like, I have to sing this song. And so I just, you know, hope tonight that this song, um, that song speaks to your heart and it encourages you uh, that Jesus is truly. Um, his hope and his love uh, is bigger than anything uh, and stronger than any struggle that we have on this earth. So, it's a song called Dear Hate.
try something new tonight. Um, just like I said, uh, I'm going into the studio uh, on Tuesday, and um, I'm, I think I'm pretty sure on the songs I'm going to do in there, but uh, this is a song uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do. I'm going to try it out on you guys tonight. I've only done it a couple times in concert, um, and I'll be honest, yesterday I started it, and I totally spaced. I had to open it up on my iPhone. like, we are just now doing the song. So uh, if it's bad tonight, y'all have two options, all right? A, you can... Um, you can be honest with me, or B, you can be Jesus' people, all right? <laughs>
Oh, I 